Robin, what made you want to take part in the Clipper 708 race? Well, after 10 years of Church of England, I've been vicar where I am for 15. Uh, you're entitled to a three month sabbatical. Uh, so I thought about uh, taking that opportunity. Well, I spoke to the bishop about it so I could go and study or get stuck into some theological books, or I could take the time out to do this race. Uh, he smiled sweetly and said, which would I prefer? And I said, I'd rather do the sailing. Somehow in the background I knew about this, so I signed up. I spent one month of my three days of training and uh, these two months crossing the Atlantic. So Robin, why Nova Scotia Clipper? Well, I think the, the Clipper organisers knew that I was uh, born in Canada. Uh, my mother was Canadian and uh, we lived out there until uh, I was three when we moved back to England where my father uh, was British. Uh, so I still have a Canadian passport. I told them that, and if there was any connection with any crew, that would be the, uh, the one I'd like to, to pursue. And it's great to have been on a, a boat with a handful of Canadians as well as uh, some other characters. So it's, it's a boat I do feel some sort of home from home with because of my Canadian connections. So I think that's why I've been put on here. And how's the race matched up to your expectations? Oh, definitely. I've just surpassed them. It's been a, a really a magnificent adventure. We were very we were well, well prepared through the training uh, to know what to expect. Uh, we had three weeks on board and, and a few more days here and there uh, to come to know exactly what it is life on board is going to be like. But in terms of looking at the sea, the sailing experience, we've won a variety of weather conditions we've had, the wildlife, and a fabulous bunch of people to be crossing the ocean with and getting to know from complete strangers to being really good friends. Uh, and I, I sort of knew all that was going to happen, but it succeeded. Have there been any particular challenges you've had to face? I was saying to somebody just the other day that uh, life on the board, uh, on the boat, is kind of split between two levels. Above deck, it's just fabulous, it's glorious, the sailing is wonderful, even when it's difficult weather and rough conditions. I really enjoy that. You go below deck and you enter another world. It's, it's hot, stuffy, uh, smelly, and we have to try and live in an environment of 45 degrees, which seems quite natural up here, down below moving around and uh, one of the things I've found really hard is preparing a meal for 14 people when none of the surfaces stay still, none of them are, are level, they're all 45 degrees, no plates or bowls stay still, and you're bracing yourself for the next crashing wave all the time and it, it's getting really hot and uh, it's quite a challenge and you've got tuna and pasta for the third time in, in a week and you've got to find a way of making it for, taste different for people. So and I'm not a natural chef, it's been fun doing that, I've really enjoyed mothering as it is uh, with, with somebody else and having that help and uh, doing that. It's been a challenge. What have you particularly enjoyed about the race? The sailing has been predictable in the sense that I've enjoyed that bit, but uh, it surprised me how uh, just wonderful it's been joining together 14 people who never met before, uh, of moments of training uh, and seeing uh, a huge disparate backgrounds come together and form a crew of people who really form a cohesive crew determined to, to do well, to sail well, uh, to get on, uh, to cooperate, to support and help uh, people who, you know, back in England in the ordinary course of events wouldn't come together and uh, wouldn't become friends that we have become. Uh, in Canada on the crew as well. So it's uh, just seeing that community form, gel and work together has been been ordained for 18 years, your life gets really sort of stuck into a church and uh, as you obviously know that's a, a sort of minority of, uh, of the population so it's really been, I've uh, really enjoyed just getting my head out of the church environment completely and coming into, as you say, the real world, you get life on the boat, it's not exactly a real world but it's very other than the church and it's been fantastic, just you know people, different experiences, different backgrounds, different outlooks and their thinking and their culture that we're going just really valuable and I should take that back and give them a big pass for the day. How have the rest of the crew reacted to having a big on board? Well, you, have to, you have to ask them. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. 
Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. Uh, I've taken a fair bit of stick, <laughs> which has been fun, and uh, I do get a lot of requests for prayer when the wind isn't doing what we think it should be doing for us. And, and uh, unfortunately, we look like we're going to come in third rather than first, so thank God we've had some good winds. Um, we just need to brush up on some of our sailing techniques to pull up those other two places, but uh, it's been fun. I have to ask them uh, one or two adjustments to language. I do you know the story of Jonah? Yes, uh, apparently it is bad luck having a, a vicar of priest on board because uh, the story of Jonah, there was a great big storm until he was thrown overboard when things calmed. Uh, so when things get stormy, uh, you throw your vicars overboard. Fortunately, we haven't had serious storms and uh, they've been very kind to keep me on board. What does your wife think of you doing this? Uh, my wife's been very supportive uh, for me to do this. I have two sons, 14 and 16, two boys. Uh, all three of them have seen the boat, uh, come on board, seen the conditions below, and are all pretty incredulous as to why I should want to do this. Uh, uh, particularly Catherine, my wife, who feels boats should be only sailed in sunshine, upright, uh, and in bad conditions. Uh, she very happy to do it, but cannot comprehend doing it herself. Uh, and uh, she's had to work hard at home to hold everything together, but. Uh, talking to others on the boat that the reaction of their families and friends has been divided. On the one hand you've got people who are terribly jealous and think, oh what a wonderful opportunity, I'd love to do that. Uh, and then uh, the other reaction, the other extreme is you're completely nuts. Nobody in between. Everything, everybody seems to fall into those two extremes. Uh, my family on the nuts side. 